So I have these two small drills here and they are purely awesome tools. I use them all the time for literally everything. And they are by far my most used handheld power tools. And it doesn't really matter what brand they are because basically they are all the same. But now I have a, I think, a rather bigger issue with one of them because the shaft that comes out of the drill where the chuck is attached to is kind of loose and wobbles around. And that's definitely not good. Fortunately, there's a simple solution to that. Um, <sighs> one problem well, is... Well, no. J go away, Wait. just go away. Man, you can't leave this guy alone in my shop. Drill, come here. Alright. So my guess is that maybe just one of the bearings of the shaft is broken, so let's open it up and have a look. What the hell is this? Warranty warning. Do not open, do not use as a hammer. Of course not. As you can see, I did not open it. It did all on its own. It's quite amazing when you look at how tiny all this stuff is and in comparison what power it can deliver. Well, but now let's figure out where the issue is. So I guess I take all of that out first. Okay. I guess I should have removed the chuck at first. Oh, that's the motor. And that's the metal planetary gear reduction in here. Cool. Well, <laughs> I really should have removed the chuck first. But that's the planetary gear system in here. Sometimes the threads on chuck screws are left threaded. Yeah. Well, like I thought, left threaded screw and Loctite. I had to put the drill partly back together so that I can now fully remove the chuck. Hopefully that works. Ah, finally! Okay, so now we are back here and now I can take off this ring here. So there's this little ring that I need to remove. And yes, it was intentional for you to not see that because I film the back of my head so rarely. <laughs> there it is. And... That's the shaft. So now that everything is in front of me in pieces, I noticed that the bearing I wanted to replace doesn't even exist. It may look like there has to be a bearing, but these bolts are for the clutch and these actually are a bearing, but they are an axial bearing. And it can take the load from the downward pressure, so when you're screwing or drilling, you always press down onto your work and an axial bearing can easily handle this load. But for the radial or side-to-side -side guidance, so when you apply pressure like this or this, there's no bearing for this, but instead just a bushing in the front and here it's worn out because, in my opinion, the surfaces are not smooth enough for this. Let me explain what I think happened. Imagine this was the bushing where the shaft fits into. If the surface of the shaft and the inner surface of the bushing would be perfectly smooth and there was no friction, then this would work perfectly fine. But as the surfaces are not very smooth and there is friction, every time you spin it and apply a force this way or this way, it partially grinds away parts of the bushing. So when you apply this pressure, you grind away a little bit of material here and here. And if you apply pressure this way, then you grind away material from here and here. And over time, this will create a shape like this. And there you can see, this is not guided properly anymore and it can rock back and forth. Now of course this is an extreme exaggeration, but in principle this is what happened to my drill over time. As you can see, and by looking at it, 
I would say it's about a tenth of a millimeter of play, which is quite a lot. Now fixing this is, well, possible but difficult, because I would have to make a new bushing and probably also a new shaft, because the bushing could have also worn down the shaft to this shape. It's probably a combination of both of these and, well, I don't think it's worth the money or effort that's required to fix this. Now I'm okay with not fixing it because for screwing it works perfectly and you basically don't even notice this issue. Just for drilling it's a little less accurate, but it still does the job. But the problem is that this was totally not how I intended the video to be. And if I end it like this then I basically just wasted a few minutes of your lifetime. So instead I thought I could explain how all of these components inside the drill work. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are wondering how this really practical auto lock feature of the drill works. The motor can always spin, but you can never turn it and open and close the chuck easily. So I put this one just back together and removed the feature. So now I can turn the motor. And of course, it also works. And all I did for it is leaving out these little pins. It's not that simple to explain, but I try my best. So in the front there are these pieces here, and these pins go in here. And this then gets closed with this cap. This cap is then fixed in the housing, and the shaft joins here. When you take a closer look, you can see that this piece has two flat spots. And when you move the chuck, this flat spot slightly pushes the pins to the outside, and that's enough so that they jam up with this cap here and when it's then jammed up it's locked. And as it's symmetrical this works in both directions. Now when the motor is on, these four pieces here which are attached to the back plate, they move this piece and the pins simultaneously. So let's say when it rotates in this direction you can see that it pushes against here and at the same time the pins move also to this location. So it always pushes here, here, here and here, when it's turning in this direction. And then you can see that the pins are at the center of the flat spot, which means they are closest to the center, and so they can't jam up with this piece here, with the cap, and then the mechanism is free to move. Pretty cool actually. Moving on to the clutch, so therefore you have this ring here, and some steel bolts, and they just slip over these ridges of the ring. And that's where this noise is coming from. And with another steel ring and a spring and a plastic screw, and there you have your indicator. So the higher the number on the indicator is, the harder the spring gets tensioned and so this mechanism can transfer more torque before the bolts slip over the ridges of the ring. Next interesting part is the gearbox. This is a two-speed drill and it has two planetary gears. Now this is how it looks without the motor and this here is the ring you can move to change the gears. So this here would be first gear, I'm turning on the end where the chuck is, this here would be the motor end and as you can see the motor would spin very fast and the chuck spins slow but that means more torque. And this would be second gear, as you can see motor spins slower, chuck spins faster but less torque. The way this works is, this one is the ring that moves and as you can see it can interlock with this one and when they are locked together this is first gear and in first gear when they are locked together you can see that both planetary gears work and reduce the speed and in second gear these inner teeth interlock with these teeth and when these are locked together you can see that the second planetary gear is not active but just the first one so that means higher speed and less torque. And the gear coming out from the gearbox connects to the last planetary gear which is attached to the shaft connection with the outer ring and as you can see the shaft is not driven by the middle gear or the ring but by the planet gears. When it's assembled it looks like this so now we are in second gear if I switch to first gear and you can see the end spins much faster and second gear. And here you can see it again in action. So this would be first gear, second gear, first gear, 
second gear. That's all there is to it. Now one problem there could be is that you can't switch the gear at every position because sometimes the teeth of the movable ring just don't mesh up with the other one and so the mechanism just refuses to switch. But as you know from experience you can always switch the gear no matter where the drill stops. So how did they solve that? So this tab of the movable ring fits into the switch handle and it is spring loaded. And it also has its own springs, so it makes the clicking noise in the housing. And with this being spring loaded, you can always switch the gear. And if the teeth don't match up, the spring still continues to apply pressure. And once you start the drill, it will then automatically click into place and the gear is then finally switched. And these were pretty much all the mechanical parts of a small drill like this. Of course there's still the motor and the electronics. But I'm not too familiar with that, so all I can tell you is it works like this. And this is as far as my knowledge goes there. So, yeah, let's put it back together. Alright, it put itself back together and still working, but as far as the repair goes, um, let's say I found another solution. Because like every woodworker says, you can never have enough um, uh, drills. Yeah, I think that's what they say. And when this is locked, you can... Oh, it's not locked anymore. It's extremely difficult to show this. It's going to be so much fun putting this back together. So this would be first gear. Come on. <laughs> 